Hello and welcome to a special edition of Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by fans, brought to you by FAUWildsNest.com. Uh, as usual, my name is Dan. I'm here with uh, the normal cast of fellows, uh, Jack and Shane. Uh, but this uh, tonight, we've actually got a, a special guest uh, for you guys to come and talk about uh, some recruiting that's going on. We've got Andrew from 247 Sports, and uh, we are... Um, We'll talk a little bit about FAU's recruiting and kind of how the, the class is shaping up and, and what we can expect uh, moving into National Signing Day next week. So uh, I guess we'll get right into it. Uh, Andrew, what are, you, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking about uh, how FAU's recruiting class this year is shaping up? Um, I think when you just kind of look at FAU's recruiting class and, and given how they kind of finished out the season and experienced some, some coaching turnover, our, I think it's a pretty solid class. I mean, it might not be the highest ranked, you know, class in our rankings on 24-7 sports, but um, just just due to the fact that they don't have a lot of numbers to work with, but they're addressing a lot of positions and needs. Um, you know, you talk with guys inside the program, they really want to restock the defensive line and the offensive line, and it looks like based upon everything they've done right now, um, that they're doing that. They're getting guys both in state and out of state, guys who can come in right away and guys that can play. So, uh, I think they've done a good job there, and um, it, it, it was difficult if you really look at it. I mean, no one really knew how this whole early signing period was going to play out. They're probably one of um, five programs that got screwed the most, uh, just given the fact that they played in a conference USA championship game, and then they were in an early bowl game, so the coaches couldn't get out on the road and recruit. And I know Lane kind of joked here and there about it uh, in terms of not knowing what to do. So I think it's a little uncharted water, don't know how it's going to really shake out, but I think they did a good job in uh, – um, it, it should be an exciting finish of sorts, I, I would think. Uh, Andrew, you kind of uh, hit on it, you know, especially with the timing of the bowl games and, you know, with the early signing period, everyone's kind of new to it. Uh, a lot of people have kind of mentioned, especially with the lower numbers this year, that it was a little bit of FAU strategy to kind of wait um, and see which one of those kind of in-betweener kids, uh, the kids that are kind of, you know, those high three stars in between P5 and G5, um, and grab some of those kids that are pushed out late, uh, you know, with others trying to get bigger players. Do you think the, a lot more kids signed and anticipating there wasn't as many of those kids around that maybe they thought they could grab, you know, before the first signing period? I think without a doubt. I mean, you just talk with anyone in the industry, um, you know, guys that, you know, do, this, do what I do, and no one really knew what was going to happen. I mean, I think, Different people have reported different numbers. I think we've reported somewhere around 70%. I think ESPN somewhere in that ballpark as well. But just 70% of, the, of these kids signed. And uh, I think a lot of people are really surprised about how many um, kids actually signed with, you know, group of five schools. Um, we thought maybe it was more of the power five schools that would have the leverage and be like, well, hey, well, you got to let us know when you're in now. But I think, I mean, I, I, you know, every program is, is kind of experiencing this and, because the recruiting pool is shrank down a little bit. And, and I think FAU's strategy coming in was smart. Um, you know, let's focus on just kind of coaching. And then once we get to December, we'll see what's still left on the board and what's still available. The only problem is they won all these games, and then it was like, all right, well, now we're playing in this bowl game early in the season, so we can't really get out and recruit. So um, I think that definitely has hurt them a little bit. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, FAU won 10, ga 10 or 11 games, and, they're a brand name, and I think that's what's allowing them to go into Georgia and Alabama and kind of get some of these kids to uh, probably have our, 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 those fringe players like a Cordell Little John, the quarterback they got, and uh, some of the other guys they're chasing. Andrew, is Jack here. Uh, out of the five guys already signed in the seven uh, current verbal commits, uh, what is one guy, uh, if you had to pick one, that FAU fans should be most excited about? Uh I think, I mean, everyone, the offensive and defensive line play is never really sexy. Um, one guy who I've actually seen a few times that I'm kind of high on is Malcolm Davidson, the running back at Kissimmee. Um, I, he ran a 4-4-4 in the 40-yard dash at one of our camps uh, or at a Nike camp back back there last spring. And that's actually the eighth fastest time out of any 2018 prospects in the class. So uh, he's a burner. Um, we saw it with FAU last year. I mean, they found ways to get Willie Wright involved. So I think if you're looking for a guy who is going to make a splash right away, he's one. Um, 
I know the coaching staff also really loves uh, Doug Johnson, the big offensive lineman out of Fort White. Uh, he uh, camped a few different times, uh, or he did at Miami. I saw him work out. Got to have to work, rework the body a little bit, but if someone told me, I mean, this is a perfect Conference USA type of offensive tackle and someone that uh, they they were able to beat out at UCF and Cincinnati for. So those are two that I think the coaches are excited about. And uh, and then you got Miko Dodson, the cornerback, um, from, from Garden City Community College. He's originally a mainland kid. He was at Georgia Tech. Um, I know he took a visit to Colorado State, but I think they're expecting him to stick. Uh, so I think he, I wouldn't be surprised if he was in the rotation early next season. Andrew, just from, like, uh, being at all the camps and stuff, and I know you mentioned uh, just kind of the body there and kind of what's happened even if, for people that are in the pretty world following what's going on, my recruitment at D-line and, uh, just some of the talk of the early, how difficult is it? And just I don't think people realize how little o -li good O linemen and D linemen are out there. Uh, it seems like you know that's the one position where a lot of kind of the tweener kids get elevated really quickly. Oh, I would say especially down here in South Florida. I mean, it was a down cycle just in general. But um, I mean, when you think South Florida, you think about speedy guys, and they never really produce offensive linemen. So I think that's why. You know, FAU is up in Georgia searching for guys that are, that are in Alabama. And like you said, Miami's experiencing this right now with the defensive line. I mean, they're chasing after guys that they would never give looks to any other year. But they don't have an option because, I mean, there's only 30% of the class is still available. I mean, I personally said my advice, if I was a fringe, you know, power five, group of five prospect who was thinking, of, you know, my best option at the time was, uh, you know, FA or UCF, I'd wait if I was a lineman, like a D tackle or an offensive tackle and to see – roll the dice and see what happens in, in January because everyone's going to be going after you. So it'll be interesting to see what, what kind of happens next year. But the pool is very, very small. So uh, I think FAU is kind of having an experience that, and they're probably getting into some recruiting battles they, they weren't anticipating um, just based on cycles in the past. Uh, Andrew, just – for uh, the, the fans that don't know, everyone knows, you know, the head coach and Lane is obviously the name, but a lot of times the assistants, you know, don't get enough recruit, uh, credit in this, these recruiting cycles. Who's the assistant that maybe you kind of hear his name popped up a lot um, that's, you know, really kind of making headway with a lot of these kids? I think it, uh, it starts with Eric Mathis, the recruiting coordinator. He's a guy I've seen out. Uh, at home with the games before. He's kind of, the, you know, the rock and all this, keeping this all together. Um, but another guy that the kids seem to really like, and I don't know if it's his Netflix fame or what, but is, uh, is uh, Clint Trickett. He's a guy who's gotten them into some living rooms in, uh, in Alabama and gotten them in there with some, some guys. I think he's young and, and exciting. And like I said, I mean, he was the last chance to you. So I think he's kind of a little bit of a name. So I, I've been impressed with what he's done. And I think, just their support staff and player personnel guys are, are pretty good at identifying talent um, and, and just getting guys, and, and that's how you got to do it. And, I mean, Lane tells himself as it is. Staying on the uh, assistant coach uh, discussion, Andrew, uh, what role – this is a tough question for you, but what role do you think Charlie Weiss Jr. could have uh, in recruiting uh, at FAU? Being so young – is it easier for him because he could relate to players more? Is it more difficult because maybe parents uh, don't like how someone just older than their own son is coming into their house trying to take their son away? Uh, do, do you think that's an advantage for FAU, a disadvantage? I don't. I don't. I think all that stuff gets blown out of proportion in terms of ages and, and whatnot. I mean, I don't think that's going to hurt him at all. I mean, they, kids aren't – really going to be picking based on, you know, their position coach. I mean, they, they would love to say that, but, I mean, there's guys out there that have five or six position coaches that are throughout their college career. So I don't think it's going to hurt him in any way. I mean, his dad's obviously someone famous, and there's ESPN stories written about him. And I'm pretty sure he's one of the main reasons why they actually got that quarterback the other day. I think I wrote reading some quotes about him. So um, everyone's, I, everything I've heard about him is, is he's a, you know, he's a smart offensive mind and, I mean, uh, kids, I, I don't think they base decisions on, on uh, the age of, of, okay. of who's recruiting them. And I, I'm not sure how many schools are going to negatively use that against FAU down the stretch. I don't think there's many. Maybe if he was out in Alabama and, you know, they're going head-to-head -head with Georgia and, you know, Alabama could be like, oh, well, you know, he's only 24. I think it would be a difference, but not, not at this level. Okay. 
Andrew, what um so th this class is going to be relatively uh relatively small with the number we've already signed and the the number of uh hard commits we have. Do you do you think there's there's somebody out there that we may not be aware of that would be um I don't know, maybe the the whale of this class or do you think it's we're going to kind of have the same you know that same uh high two star, three star player with some solid group of five offers is is there one player that one or two players that might seriously consider FAU that would kind of jump off the page? Uh, well, I, I know they only have two or three spots that are, that are left in play. Um, the, the one name that I know the coaches really like, and, you know, he might not be that guy that has, let's say those, those huge power five offers, but it's someone that the coaches um, is very talented is Jalen Ram. I think it's Ramy. He's out of uh, Alabama. He's uh, one of those kids that, made a name for himself in the Alabama-Mississippi State All-Star game. Uh, I think Lane Kiffin's actually going in home with him on, on Wednesday night. Um, but he's a guy that has the UConn offers, Georgia State. We're getting some SEC looks at some point. So he's a three-star type of kid, and uh, I think we have him as the, as the, in the top 60s in terms of linebackers. Um, so I think he, he would give you know the class a little bit of juice um, down the stretch. Another one I know the coaches are really fighting for is, is Travis Glover, an offensive lineman. Out of uh, out of Georgia, he's uh, kind of like what I was talking about that other offensive lineman. He doesn't have the best body, but he's six five three ten. Uh, they're battling actually um, uh, Georgia State for him. He visited a few weeks ago. Lane, I think, met with him on Tuesday night. So if they were able to add a body like that, I think that would that would definitely uh, add, add some some juice to the class. And then I think the final one uh, let me, is Contavious Smoke. Um, he's a running back out of Alabama, out of Alabama that uh, uh, he's got a lot of power five looks. I know FA is still kind of pushing for him, but so are a bunch of schools like Kentucky and, and uh, um, North Carolina. So he would probably be the biggest one, but those other two I know uh, FA would be very excited to add. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> All right. Um, one, more, one more question I got for you. It doesn't really have to – do with uh, this year's recruiting class, but out of the few um, transfers that we got last year, you know, Chris Robinson, uh, Duarte from West Virginia, and you know, we can even throw in uh, that grad uh, transfer from Tulane, offensive lineman uh, Junior Diaz. Uh, which, which transfer should FAU fans be most excited for? And that's going to be tough because it should obviously be Chris Robinson. Um, but, but, you know, who, who do you think maybe could be a, a diamond in the rough, uh, transfer or, you know, I'll even open it up to anyone in the recruiting class that came in last year, including freshmen. Well, I think Chris Robinson, I mean, that's an elite 11 type of kid. And I know he got into some trouble there at Oklahoma, but I mean, I think he's never had a quarterback like him in the system. I know Kendall Bryles was, was really high on him and, um, I, I think he, he could be a complete stud. I mean. Uh, I mean, that elite 11 attorney, I think at times it gets overplayed. But this is a guy who's thrown on the camp circuit and everything like that. I mean, he has the, the natural talent to be great. So I, I don't think, you know, we should downplay how good he could be. Uh, but I think FA fans should certainly, um, you know, keep an eye on him and let's see what he does this spring. In terms of, uh, you know, one transfer I think that could have a huge impact is, is Kyle Davis, the kid that came in from Auburn. I mean, I remember him when he was a sophomore. He looked like a college linebacker and he was playing receiver in Georgia. He ended up at Auburn. Obviously got ran into some issues there. And, you know, now he's at FAU. I think he's a guy at, at this level that you could put in the slot. And, you know, no one's going to run with him. He, he has a chance to just dominate. And, I mean, with the amount of throwing we've seen from this, that offense before, I, I think he's a guy who could get you five, six catches a game for roughly 100 yards and just be a total freak at, the, at this level. So you you would say he's the new John Franklin the third? <laughs> I, I I mean he's more I mean John Franklin the, the, the third the speedy guy this guy's like he's all jacked up I mean you guys are gonna see him be like man is he on steroids or or what I mean he's got <laughs> he looks like a damn bodybuilder and that, he's been like that I mean, someone sent me a photo of him when he was like a sophomore in high school so I think he's a little more physical you know when you when you play in the in the, in the conference USA you kind of get you know is he a tight end is he is he a big receiver I I just think he's a, just a mismatch on the field so I think uh, he 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 will be a good one Andrew if I'm correct he has to sit this year correct 
I, I don't know on that. I, I, I would think so, though. Okay. Um, Andrew, just actually, I had one last question. Was there, and just maybe you kind of speak out this and take it a chance as uh, the, I couldn't even with this, uh, there was nothing on him in the defense uh, end at a, um, at a Lyman High School in Orlando. It seemed like kind of a out of nowhere, um, you know, a risk. Uh, type kid. Um, is there anything you could say on him? Was it, did you? Has anyone heard his name before? Was he even out there, or is this just the coaching staff just saw something? Well, I mean, it's it's pretty rare for these days for kids to you know go completely under the radar given Twitter and and huddle and all of that. But I mean, that, that kid doesn't have a Twitter, so I, I think a lot of us don't really know about him. I know he played in the uh, in the a, a local Central Florida All Star game and had a huge monster performance. Um, I've heard from a few different people in Boca that they think he's he's a freak stud and he's going to be a steal for them. So, so I mean, we'll see. It in like like I said, I, I mean, at, at the beginning of when you guys had me on, I mean, the defensive line and offensive line board is just so, you know, it's so small right now that people are just reaching for guys. So, I mean, while it might look like a questionable take, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, there's not really that many other options out there. I mean, for example. Uh, Jordan Miller, a, a defensive tackle out of uh, Jacksonville, Sandalwood. He, he visited FAU, you know, two weeks ago on an official visit. FAU's feeling good. Then all of a sudden, uh, Tennessee sees his film, uh, Miami sees his film, and Mark Rick goes in home and he's committed, you know, a couple hours later. So, I mean, that's just – it shows the level of where everyone's having to reach right now. And, and I just think it's a product of no one really anticipating how this was all going to play out. See, so the, the talent pools, uh, especially in Florida for the lines, are, uh, are pretty small this year, but that hasn't stopped FIU from getting some studs. How worried should Al Nation be about uh, Butch, Butch Davis and the Panthers down in Miami with this class they got coming up? Yeah, I was a big fan of, of you know, I, I'll say this. Um, you know, because I go around to all these games and these camps, and you get to know the second tier level kids, you know, not just top studs, but you see them all the time. And I thought last year FIU took a lot of questionable kids where I was like, ah, you know what? I, I don't know if this is, is this kid an FCS kid or, or is this kid that have a, have a chance at FIU? This year, I think they've gone and did a great job of just taking, you know, some, some straight studs i mean i i think they have a really good class um i think they have a really good uh uh support staff in place that is identifying these kids but I, i'm not sure if that model is going to work i think fau right now has a better model of you know poaching the grad transfer market uh going after some junior college kids because at the end of the day if you look at the most successful programs in conference USA, say they're the ones that get college ready bodies i mean it, it, it takes time to develop a kid over four years instead of just being able to be a guy who's, who's ready to contribute right away. And I think we're seeing FAU bring in those type of bodies. All right. All right. Well, if don't ask anything else, thank you, Andrew. Um, you're the best. You're bringing <laughs> quite the most information. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I appreciate uh, it, guys. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, for being on. And um, so we'll we'll try to, depending on, on how things go, Jack and, and Shane and I will kind of talk it over and maybe we'll uh, we'll have a wrap-up after National Signing Day and, and kind of forecast the rest of the class uh, or, or kind of how we see the rest of the year going and looking into next year. So, um, again, thanks, Andrew, from 247 Sports. Thanks, as always, to Jack and Shane. And uh, we'll see you next time. Go Owls! Thank you.